I had an absolute blast casting the Paragon Major League 9 that just happened yesterday. Think Twice won, but I'm kind of conflicted. My enthusiasm for the continued competitive scene here in Paragon is abundant, but the meta that was displayed was... I definitely have mixed feelings. One of the cards that was featured 100% of the time, not in 100% of heroes, but basically in everybody that wasn't a caster, was Unbroken Spirit. I chose to dive into the math behind this card and see if the math told me why it was so good. Marillus Action is a game and screen recorder that offers the lowest megabytes per frame, the lowest computer resource usage, and the highest FPS recording. Check the link in the video description to learn more. Yeah, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a Paragon Guide. I am Self and as we look behind the math at Unbroken Spirit. So guys, it's really darn strong. Uh, it was kind of sad to see it used on carries, even though it's pretty much meant to be a tank card. But what does the math say? Let's look look behind it. The T upfront TLDR, what you absolutely need to know is you probably know what Unbroken Spirit is. It gives a lot of health. You know, if you have 2,000 2, to 3,000 health, 240 to 360 health back is a ton. Basically, guys, virtually all heroes will have enough base health to profit. Yes, profit from almost half of all the hard CC that's in the game. And with added health from cards and vitality, the profit... Profit, guys, profit health will be enough to mitigate a small fraction of the next ability or basic attack that you take for most forms of CC. So with the ability to gain power, health, neutralize most forms of CC, and significantly reduce burst damage, Unbroken Spirit could be a must-have card on any hero, any role, period. Throw in Growth Totem into the mix, and even a carry can get infinitely growing power, HP, and great CC neutralization that just continues to grow through Growth Totem since it works off of maximum health. And Gro Unbroken Spirit may be an absolute must-have on any hero, even if there's at least one form of CC on the enemy team, as it basically just gets rid of the damage component of that. This is basically the TLDR. Essentially, it's broken unbroken spirit is broken now how do i come to that pretty stark statement here is the math ladies and gentlemen a little more in-depth look at the card um and kind of just proving to you how i came up with those numbers and those statements and conclusions guys if you don't know unbroken spirit is a three agility nine vitality growth card works great fighters bruisers tanks carries even can go for this card um you know even a tanky caster can dive a wee bit into agility if you really wanted to like a shinbi for example um and and get this card 13 power 360 health 36 ability defense makes it one of the most efficient stat to cost card in the game um sevran and Narender, if you guys don't know them, go check them out. Uh, mainly, they're, they're, they're on Reddit. They they do a much more math than I do, believe it or not. And they they break they break all this stuff down, and, and it is one of the most efficient card, probably maybe the most efficient card. So it gets the most stats, plus an amazing passive. Reactive regeneration gain 3% of your maximum health, maximum health, not your current health, per second for four seconds total 12 percent of your maximum health in total after taking hard crowd control can stack so this is hard stuns hard knockups that completely remove control from your hero now when you take a look at the math you do some uh some calculations based around maximum health here that you can see right here versus the three percent health that you get per second and then the total four second um total that you get here we can see something interesting here if you could get it when you only have 600 health uh you get 18 health a second 72 total for four seconds but more likely 
I started in the Paragon Major League 9 tournament that just happened this last weekend. I saw, uh, going back in the replays, the lowest health people got Unbroken Spirit at was about 1600. And that was carries. Carries were getting it. Uh, 48 health per second if, you know, if they took hard crowd control. Making it 192 total health that they would get. Tanks would be around the 2200, 2400 mark, um, all the way up to, yes, the 3000 mark. So they were getting 240 to 360 health back from CC. And as you can see, while that may not sound like a lot, there's something that gets in the way from hard CC doing a ton of damage, and we'll come to that shortly. If you can manage to get more health than that, which it's all, it's it's basically impossible if you're going for Unbroken Spear instead of the Godmother to get 4,000 health. But if you manage to get up there somehow, that's 400, 432 health is pretty insane. Now we get into the part that I just kind of hinted at. What prevents hard CC from doing a ton of damage? And... That's that ability defense, previously known as ability armor. All heroes have 25 of it right off the bat. Everybody has 25 ability armor. Um, that's just what everybody has. Basically, that means it re reduces all ability damage by 20%. Not quite, probably around 17, 18. Um, but... Unbroken Spirit gives you 36 more. So 36 plus that base 25, meaning you have 61 ability defense. When you... Crunch the numbers, that's basically um, about, what was that, 28% reduced um, reduced damage. You only took about 60, 62% uh, of, of the damage from, from abilities. So that meant abilities didn't do much. When you make a list of all the hard CC in the game, which is right here, and do some damage, uh, taking into consideration added power i did um you know i did add in you know a, mod a good amount of power for the different abilities here taking into account who the heroes were what they what kind of builds they would probably be going for taking you know and just assuming that they are going for power just to see what the maximum effect um unbroken spirit can have so these are definitely conservative numbers um it it or it Conservative in that that's a lot of damage for these for these cards. Likely the damage is going to be even less. So Horfrost here is going to do 1742. Yeah, it's not much, but 61 uh, ability armor is quite a bit reduces that damage quite a bit. Um, uh, Kyrosizm here, you are stunned twice from Kyrosizm, once for you and then the other explosions. Uh, 608 uh, damage. And of course, Kyrosizm has the has the option of doing a ton more damage. But all of the other ones, really uh, pretty predictable. Feast from a Countess still does 735 damage. Spo before that armor, it was like 1,000, 1,100. Um, and as you can see, when you go all the way down here, yeah, CC, it does a modest amount of damage. And that's, that's A-OK. -okay. Now, what is what are these numbers this is the hp needed to nullify damage through unbroken spirits passive so what this is is this is how much health you need to regenerate back the damage that was dealt to you through that hard cc so for example if a countess alts you uses her feast ability to deal 735 damage in order to rejuvenate that regenerate that damage again you would need 6122 health to get the 12 percent back equaling out 735 well that's not necessarily the best example for that because nobody's going to have 6000 health a lot of these other abilities look at the health needed absolutely doable on a lot of of heroes guys look at how many abilities i have highlighted here that require the health the maximum health that a lot of heroes can definitely get so you know stasis bomb from a decker if you have 1473 max maximum health uh with unbroken spirit on you're gonna regenerate the whole damage back what is all this though over here this 
I was like, okay, so if that's the amount of max, that's if that's the amount of health you need to regenerate the damage from it, what if you have more health than that? Well, this is the total difference to health that um, that you will that you that 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 will happen if you take those abilities plus certain amounts of health. So, say a countess. Uh, or actually, you know what? Say a crunch. Say a crunch right crunches you, an up, an upper up, an empowered right crunch to stun you, and you have 2,500 health. Well, with a good amount of power on that crunch, she's going to do 255 damage. But if you have 2,500 health, you're actually going to profit health. You're going to actually gain 45 health from him stunning you and you having 2,500 health. If you have 2,500 health and a Decker Stasis bombs you, you're actually going to gain 123 health. Not only are you going to mitigate the damage she dealt to you, but you're going to gain 123 health. If you have 2,100 health and a Narbash thunks you, not only are you going to mitigate that damage, but you're also going to gain 75 health. Basically, for a lot of these scenarios here, if you even have a modest amount of health, which we'll 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 see in in a moment, you're actually going to gain health from getting hit by hard CC. That is unbelievable. So some statements we can make: virtually all heroes, everyone, will have enough base health to profit from almost half of all CC in the game. So it doesn't matter who you are playing. If you put on Unbroken Spirit, chances are, well, in fact, 100%, this will happen. You will likely profit from almost half of all the CC in the game. So this Horfrost, Stasis Bomb, Smash and Grab, etc., etc. If you go down here and highlight almost half of all these abilities, depending on your hero, it's likely you will just straight up nullify that damage just through your base health alone. Not even considering the fact Unbroken Spirit gives you additional health, plus the vitality you need to equip the the dang card. When you include the added health from cards and ability and cards and vitality, the profit health will be enough to mitigate a small fraction of the next ability that you take, the next basic attack that you take for most forms of CC. Of course, high damage abilities like Kyrosizum like feast um take a ton of health right to rejuvenate because they do a lot of damage but for the rest of these abilities guys you're gonna pretty much profit from any forms of cc that's pretty insane so with the ability to gain power health neutralize the damage from most CC and significantly reduce other burst damage from other abilities that don't deal CC right through the basic, through the uh, ability defense from Unbroken Spirit. Unbroken Spirit could very much be a must-have card on any hero, any role. Again, like I said before in, in the TLDR, throw and growth totem into the mix and even a carry can get infinitely growing power HP, and great CC neutralization. And why don't you want that? Why don't you want that? All you need as a carry is time. Time to deal your sustained damage. And you can just kill anything. Oh, that's all you need. You just need time. And your sustained damage will burst, will, will, will definitely go through pretty much anybody. And Unbroken Spirit may be an absolute must-have on card on any hero as I, as we saw in the PML if there's even at least one form of CC on the enemy team. The only people we didn't see building it were ranged casters. Gideon, Howitzer, we didn't see a Howitzer in, 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 in the game, but Bellica, Gadget, those three heroes were the only ones not building um, not building Unbroken Spirit. Nato Sick in the last game uh, didn't do didn't do that. He he built a proper carry deck. Um, other than that, literally every other person hero role was building Unbroken Spirit and Unstable Cyborg usually. So there you guys go. What do you think? Let me know down down in the comments. Uh, 
it's powerful. Unbroken Spirit, it looks like it's a literally a must-have card. Amazon is the tried and true way of shopping for anything you need or want at the lowest prices. Support the channel at no cost to you by doing your Amazon shopping through the link in the video description. So, ladies and gentlemen, please like the video if you like it, dislike it, if you dislike it, share it to the community, and of course, guys, subscribe if you guys like this content, especially if you found it useful. Please subscribe so I can do it for you in the future. Tons more videos coming out, tons more math, uh, Steel, Aurora, Fate, Gideon, Rev, Sev, Wraith. I want to do guides and decks for, I want to do uh, beginner guides for all those beginners that are coming to the game now that it looks so beautiful. And jungle guides, for more math, there's just, there's tons more. So please subscribe. And of course, see the video description for links to my website, all my decks, merchandise store, and of course, my Amazon affiliate link. Until next time, like always, guys, stay optimistic and positive.